Hi, good morning. Here, Blessing Torch. As I said before, um, we are going to be speaking about many ways of loving. Um, not only receiving love, but also giving love. And, um, and being victorious, as is written, glory over glory, victory over victory. So, um, in this hour, um, this morning, um, God embraced me with the story of Ruth again. Um, with a new view on how both act with Naomi. I mean, Ruth, well, both of them, but mainly um, Ruth in this case, because she, she was the one who was working in his field when he came back from Bethlehem. Um, so I'm going to go straight uh, with what my heart is beating in this hour. And it said, Ruth um, chapter 2, it said, um, Boaz asked the four men, and his heart says, who yearns woman is that? The foreman's reply, she is the Moabites who came back from Moab with Naomi, she said. Please, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and was worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant's girts. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. And whenever you are 30, go and get a drink from the water jars. The men have failed. At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She exclaimed, Why have I found such a favor in your eyes that you notice me as a foreigner? Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother in your homeland and came in to live with a people you didn't know know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded for the Lord, the God of Israel, under whom winds you have come to take refuge. And on we know it's no, you can go forward. But I just feel that this is very crucial in this hour for us. To learn how to be kind to one another. Mainly with those persons that God has put in your hands, in your life. We must learn how to let go of resentment and forgiveness, but most um, wrong way of thinking and getting into humbleness for allow God to teach us and to lead us and to show us His ways, His thoughts, because it's not about our ways, it's about His ways, His path. It's about His thoughts, His way of thinking, His plans, His blueprint, his design is perfect, it's good when we follow his lead we found grace and favor wherever we go but what struck me immediately when I was reading this, I saw many things but one of them is when husband and wife um, show kindness to one another 
And the way that we should show kindness to one another is by giving the everything. The everything or the opportunity to be and to be open to show kindness and protection. We see kindness and protection here. He said that he talked to the men in the field. Don't touch this lady. In other words, make sure that you respect this lady and don't treat her bad. Probably because she was a Moabit, but no Moabit longer because she chose to follow to follow Naomi um, ways of believing in a God that was alive, the God in a living God, and um, but also following the lead and the good counsel of her mother-in-law. So. I don't think it was only because she was a Moabit. It was because this man he was a gentleman. He was actually, um, God said, he was known, he was known as a, give me a second, as a kinsman redeemer. And um, that's mean that he was moving in the town with he was moving in the town with honor and respect with everyone he was equally with everyone he was not giving himself um, in the bad ways to the people so um, he, he was he was well, well known in the town for his good deeds you don't gain good reputation out of nothing. You are conquering. You you are victorious. No matter what's happening, no matter what's coming to you, you make sure that you return with goodness, and and you and you build a good name no matter what because you choose to do it with God, with God ways, with God leadership, with God way of thinking, with with God design. Um, so I would say that the other point here is that it is crucial for us to allow God be the one who leads us with his thoughts with his design so for that to take place in a marriage couple it's important for us to come to daddy the father of truth every single day every morning to receive his his leadership for his day um, or allow him in the nighttime season uh, where we're sleeping to to um, to God empower us with his truth with his leadership with his goodness and uh, in the midst of the sleep so we wake up with his instruction we wake up with his um, ideas we wake up with his um, uh, empowerment, grace for whatever is in need in that day, and for us to be responsible and stand up, and stand up in fullness when He wake up with all things, so we can gain the fullness of the information that He wants to give us. Because always God going to show us a little thing. Um, for it's like a, an invitation, a card or invitation for us to sit down and receive the rest of the information that we need for that very thing that He wants us to follow. <laughs> Oh, just to enjoy that day, you know? Not everything is about doing something remarkable, you know, for God. When we're doing something remarkable for another person or even for ourselves, you know, like a treating ourselves in ways that we had never treated ourselves. And, in, and same in the holy ways, you know, in the pure ways. Because we're talking about God ways. We're not talking about vanity. We're talking about unselfish ways because we're pleasing God. Because why we're pleasing God? Because we love God. And we want to love Him with all our minds, with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our soul. So for us to fulfill that, we must search after His heart. And allow His heart be the one who visited us. So and so, so when things like this come in, we know how to flow. Because our selves are full, are overflowing with His goodness. So the other thing that he stood up here, besides kindness, 
What's the word of kinsman's redeemer? You know, how be a redeemer, how everything flows in the story as a redeemer. So, um, let's say, um, uh, a good meaning of redeemer or closer redeemer is uh, the scripture say that is a relative, it's a relatives not only can be a sibling or so a person that is family bloodline but also a husband a wife your children um it can be a mother-in-law and so on so um the other thing that that god wants us to know that uh, a good example of redeemer not only was Boaz's story, but also Jesus Christ of Nazareth's story. And um, before jumping on that, I want to read the the meaning of kindness, which is is the evident when a person puts needs the needs of his or her spouse first acting on what will please of help the other must know and not on self-interest by never being rude or abusive to your spouse in any way shape or form you build a relationship of mutual trust and respect mutual trust and respect by giving why you thought it would be the most important for you to think it's interesting because God said love your neighbor as yourself but your husband and your wife are not your neighbors there's a different way to run life um, but even though there's moments that God will request us to lay down for a good friend but he will tell you it's not for everyone to go out and do that he will tell you with whom to move in that way but with wife and husband should be a daily basis way of laying down my my desire my my wants for the wants of my husband or my wife um and the other things that I want to highlight is, give me a sec, I'm sorry. It was the sandals. Um, in the story, in the story we see that the sandals in the um, Old Testament, uh, huge, huge people I would say probably more than huge people um, this was very important it, it was symbolizing a, a covenant a covenant that he or her would be their words in this case mainly it was concerning men's you know the men's responsibility um, that he chose by his own will to redeem her and redeem her land um, but main the nothing the point here is the sandals and when I saw the sandals I asked God okay what what are you speaking in this hour concerning this covenant of he giving the sandals so I saw a husband giving his sandals to a wife but more than the wife it was giving him his sandals to God itself for the wife and when I saw that, I asked God, what is the meaning? What, do you, what is your understanding concerning this? And he showed me following peace, the covenant of peace. So he took me to Ephesians 6. As you many know, if not, go and read it. In Ephesians 6, we can see the armor uh, that we're supposed to carry with us and, and use it every single day. So there... Um, talk about the sandals of peace the the words the evangelists of peace should start at home 
with my wife and my husband. Um, you cannot say, yes, I love you, God, but you are not in peace with your husband or your wife. You say, no, but I'm in peace and I'm ministry out there and I gave souls or everything is okay, but you're in your house. Or before God eyes, your relationship with your husband or your wife are not in peace. For God, what is more important for you to work it out and to make things in balance is with your wife and your husband at home. That's the priority in God's heart. He created women and men. He made them together, and he and he made them to be fruitful and to and to subdue and to work out um, not only their own relationship but also everything that God was giving to them. So the main and first thing that God is concerned about is the way that you are walking out the fruit of the spirit in you. And with your wife or your husband, marriage life, and then with the people outside. And when we have then after that children, then yes, there's third thing would be children. You know, first with God and our relationship, our partners, children, and then the people out there. Um, that's that's the that's the line. There's no other way. That's the line. You also can be more prosperous. In the ministry, if you are prosperous at home by doing what is right with your wife, laying down for her as she's laid down also for him. But the priority here is for him to take the first step, for him to do the part of care, protection, and kindness to her. Um, and the other thing that also, it's required for us as a woman to don't take me wrong. It's 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 cutting in both sides. It's the sort. It's for both of for both of them. And uh, the other thing that um, God took um, my heart today was um, concerning the word of covenant in these days. Sad to say, people think that having a relationship with other person is uh, a game, a play game, and it's not. If you make a covenant with a person and you say it's for the rest of your life, And you also talk to God about it. You have signs and wonders. And um, and, and confirmation in every way, shape, or form you can imagine. You ask for it and you gain it. Oh, my people. We must reconsider it to sit down. And to get knowledge by God and how to run marriage life because it's not by running ah, it's not going well then I jump and found another person you will carry all those misbehavior with that another person you have to deal with your own giants you have to deal with your own wrong characters it's with God understanding it's with God ways it's with God, knowledge, and wisdom. It's not with ours. And when we come to the marriage couple, it's where more closer we are going to see our own self. Our husband, it, it can be a mirror of your own self. And God going to use that a lot. So, we must be careful and rethink and re and rewire 
our way of thinking under the leadership of God and God itself. Mirroring what was done in the cross but how resurrection took place for our benefit. We have communication, straight, personal communication with God thanks to what was done in the cross. Thanks to that sacrificial action of, of Christ is how we today can have personal communication with God and answer through through the Spirit, through the through the Spirit of God. So as it's written, let God be the one who is the leadership in the marriage couple. Not only because he is the one who searched after God's heart, mirroring what was done in the cross, how it was worked out. Probably not perfect. He, he became a human being, of course, but was perfected by God's presence and his seal, the matter. That's why we have that benefit. We have to be grateful, but also we have to oversee what was done, how it was done, because that's, that's our guideline and how to do it in a personal way, but also um, together, together as a couple, to, together as a parent, you know, as a daddy, as a mama. That's exactly what our children are going to inherit, our way of working out. Our way of communication, our way of loving each other, that's what they are going to grow up in maturity since they are baby because they are going to see if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing anyway. We giving them that inheritance. They they gonna see it. So please let us Bring a good seed to our children. But also, let us see that it's time to crucify ourselves for the good sake of the gospel, for the good sake of our own words that say, God, I love you. Then love your husband as you love God. Love your wife as you love God. Love your children as you love God. In the spirit of truth, with good actions, we don't know everything. It's time to be humble and sit down and be teachable. God, I don't know how to do this. Teach me. Sit down them. Don't say teach me and keep walk, walking out. No, sit down. Take notes. Start writing down. Okay, God, here I am. Talk to me, Holy Spirit. And Show me how to love my wife. Every person has their different own language of love. Let God teach you. Not because you was married before, you know now what to do. No, you don't. It's just something new. You started by zero again. All over again. You have to sit down with God and take notes on how to love that wife and how to love that husband. You have to gain the revelation of God's heart, but also the outpouring of God's love to manifest that love to your husband or to your wife. Um, God, I, I don't know what is the tool that I need now. What in the fruit of the Spirit is what I need now? Talk to Papa. You need kindness for this momentum in this season. You need to manifest kindness. Okay, Daddy, you sit down. Tell me how I can manifest kindness and to whom you want to manifest kindness. Oh, it's my wife. Then, okay, tell me how I'm manifesting kindness to her. And you make a list of the things that God is going to tell you to do. And be faithful with those actions. Don't take them from granted and put it on the side. No, go back in the morning and or in the nighttime and pray over that. Pray over that so you have get overwhelmed with the God template on how to love and, and do it from the heart with, with goodness, with the full goodness of God for her and for him. Uh, God said, I, I want you to have compassion in this season. Oh, 
okay, God, even if you think you know, don't don't take it like that. Because if God coming to you with that information, it means that you carry that you don't carry something that is in need that is there in the compassion line. So take it. Sit down and take it from Papa. Okay, Papa, I need to know how you want me to manifest compassion in this hour for my husband. And he will lead you. He will tell you. You write it down and pray over it. And pray over it. And let the Holy Spirit lead you and show you that the rest of that what is in need. But also empower you with that grace to have compassion. So they can feel that compassion not by mind but by heart. It's crucial. The other person going to feel that it's fake. Or if it's not fake. You want to do it for God. Remember. It's like a doing, it, doing it literally. Not even for your wife or your husband. It's God is there. It's like a doing it for God. Mm, but probably we do it with God in the same way. No God. Show me. Empower me with that grace. To do compassion. To move in compassion. To feel your compassion. And you will. Let me tell you. You will. Stay there. And then after you pray, stay in your hands and say, Here I am, Father. Here I am. Empower me. But more than empower me, let me feel your compassion. Let me feel that compassion that I need to feel right now. And if you need to ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. Because probably you walk it out with prideful attitude like okay I know what to do no God came to you saying I want to you move from compassion that's mean that he wants to give you a new knowledge about it or a new wisdom about it or a new grace to move forward with it or allow you to feel his heart for the matter it can be a totally stranger as well but he also wants to give you the the, the template and how to do it not all the time we have to take the people out there to our home. We can, if we have the way, we can also provide to them where to sleep as he did it. Jesus example it. He paid for him to be in the same place like a hotel or Airbnb that that will be in this modern age, which is in these days. Um, so it's a matter of asking Papa. And sometimes we don't have the resources, but we still have the resources with people that we know. Okay, let's do this. Let's do a fundraising to then to move forward with this. If it's a need, if he putting that in your heart, don't let your mind run because we have good ideas, but it's God idea. God designed for the matter. So, and more than that, if we are filled by God every day, Every night we ask him to be the one who go burn and be control our sleep. Let me tell you something. You you are feel by what is coming in that day already then and you will know because you are feel by God. You know? But if you are not feel by God and you are feel by the enemy or your own flesh, well, that's exactly what are going to flow. But that's why it's so important for us to know oh, uh I didn't pray enough, let me stay a little bit more. And more than talk and talk, let be the one who talk. Let be the one who carry wisdom over wisdom, knowledge over knowledge to talk. With his understanding you receiving. Posture your heart to receive. Stay there. Silence yourself, your mind, your heart, your soul. Silence everything. How we silent that? Just thinking. Imagine yourself in front of God as a human or as a light. Imagine yourself over there and let Him give you what you need. Let Him give you what you need. So, I bless you today with the kindness, with the peace, as a peacemakers, learning how to follow and to flow in peace. Remember, that's the meaning of 
removing the sandals, giving a covenant that I promise you to give you peace. In a marriage couple or any other relationship, that's the main thing that God wants us to, to work it out because He is peace, He is love. So, I bless you with God knowledge, wisdom, and understanding and how to follow peace in your marriage life. But also in other any other relationship as children and family members, a spiritual family um, members, or just people in general, that you are capable to receive from Papa the grace and as again knowledge, wisdom, and his understanding and how to follow and live under the covenant of his peace. So, shout out, shalom. See you later.